inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Bynes. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Bynes, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Today's episode is a conversation I had with returning guest, Karen Pina. Karen is an apostolic entrepreneur and minister with a heart for seeing God's people bring the knowledge of the glory of God to their spheres of influence and impact. She was actually a guest on the podcast a couple years ago, and she's someone just that I, I really enjoy connecting with from time to time, just to exchange notes on what God's speaking to our hearts about. Well, today you're going to hear her thoughts and experiences around the seasons of incubation that lead to acceleration in kingdom-driven business. There's plenty of richness in here that's going to apply to many of you that really have big vision. But before we get started with today's conversation, I want to let you know that our Igniters Mentoring Program will be opening up for registration August 14th through 16th. For all of you who desire a life-changing mentoring experience and community that will help you in your business grow and thrive in partnership with God, while having greater kingdom impact. You can hop on the early bird list now uh, to get early access to seats because there's an early bird registration process that happens before us opening it up to the public, okay? There's also some other fun perks. So you can get details and hop on the early bird waiting list now at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash mentoring. Now let's get started with our conversation here with Karen Pina. Listen in carefully and enjoy. All right. So, okay. So Karen, when we were in the Facebook group, we were having this conversation around the God's timing. You know, we were talking about seed time and harvest, talking about, you know, the various things where, where it's like, there's this period of time where God's working things out in us, through us, positioning us, you know, we're all, we're in this preparation and positioning mode, right? And you had responded to that with another perspective that you've experienced personally when it comes to the timing of God. So I'm going to like, just let you talk about that and we'll see where the conversation lands. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, the first thing that I kind of want to do is dovetail forward and then backwards. So yes. yesterday you were in the community and you were talking about a Harvard business review chart that God began to speak to you from. And you were talking about the difference between exponential, and I don't know what the other one was. Incremental. Uh, it does, incremental. Incremental versus exponential growth. And in the chart, it was showing the incremental, obviously, is like, you know, inch by inch, it's a cinch, right? You're kind of climbing up. But then exponential is more like, it looks like nothing's happening, right? But the ascension, or the place to climb up, Actually, it starts off slow, but then you just whoop, right to the top, right? And in between the two lines was this middle space, this gap, if you will, where most people, whether they're on the incremental trajectory or whether they're on the exponential trajectory, that's where they get kind of like, what's going on, God? They get frustrated. They're ready to quit. I don't see it happening. Okay? So... I agree with everything that you said about exponential growth. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how in glory, because we're all glory children, that place is called acceleration versus exponential. It's called acceleration. And, you know, I was meditating on that today in, in prep. And I know this is big around KDE, your business meetings. Okay. So here's the thing. When you're having your business meetings with God on a daily basis and he starts speaking to you from the throne in the secret place, all right? He starts giving you instructions on how to move out. Those words that he's speaking to you, they're life and spirit, right? They're quick, they're active, they're powerful. Wow, they're Hebrews 4.12 words, right? Yes. And so these are the words that causes you as entrepreneurs to accelerate. It's that, 
is what causes the acceleration or the exponential growth, okay? But here's the thing. It's acceleration in incubation. Mm. Mm. Or stated differently, you accelerate in a stealth manner. You accelerate in a stealth manner, all right? He's hiding it sometimes from you and from others. Why? Because he's protecting his vision. Wow. He's protecting what he wants to do through you, just like he protected Jesus as he was growing in stature and wisdom. Yes. Okay? So his words causes a gestational period, all right? Just like a baby who's growing in the mother's womb, right? The baby's growing, but everybody else doesn't see anything. All you see is the stomach getting bigger. But on the inside, you don't see all the intricacies of how he's woven that baby, fashioned that baby, and fearfully and wonderfully made that baby. So because we can't see all that, that's where all the frustration takes place. And most of us, you know, we're not seers, S-E-E-R-S. So we don't see into the spiritual realm. We're only going by what we can hear God say. Right. Okay. So the frustration serves a purpose too. And this is what I wanted to kind of hone in on. The frustration reveals, and I think you touched on it too, it reveals where you need to be refined. It reveals where you need to be perfected. It reveals where you need to be glorified. It, it basically says, hey, you're not like God in this area of your character and in your business. I can't trust this to you yet. <laughs> I can't trust you with this big old baby yet. Mm. Okay? So... It's not just about you being refined though, because remember the baby's growing in the womb too. So everybody is being refined. Yes. The baby's growing, you're growing, everybody in your home is growing, okay? And that's why it's important to move in his timing. All right, yes. now I wanna say something about everybody in your home growing, okay? My two daughters, I have a 30 year old and I have a 22 year old, all right? Now, when, the 30 year old was eight. She got a prophetic word about God giving her the cures to various diseases. Wow. That was the prophetic word. This little eight year old gets on the computer and starts researching what field that would bring her into. Don't ask me how she knew to do this. And she came back to me and she says, Karen, Mom, Karen, she called me. This is this is when you're. I'm going somewhere with this. This is for all the people who are raising pioneers, raising leaders, and you're entrepreneurial. Okay. She comes back to me like I'm going to be an epidemiologist. I couldn't even pronounce it. I didn't She's know eight. what it eight. I didn't even know what it was. And I was like, let me see that. So I took a look at it and I found out that an epidemiologist is one who invents the cures to various diseases. I was blown away. I was like, okay, this is interesting. Now, at the time, you know, I was struggling because, you know, I've been married before. I was a single parent. I'm like, who's going to fund this? Who's going to fund this? This is, <laughs> this, is in, this is the medical science field, right? So she's going to at least need a doctorate degree. How is this going to happen? Simultaneously, I have this vision over here for ministry and business. Yes. Right? So as he was preparing her, she went on and he began to give me instructions, put her in this science camp. Every year she went to a different science camp. By the time she was in high school, people were calling her, giving her scholarships, scholarships as a junior to science camps that only other seniors in college went to. She was featured, you know, in our local newspaper and state level. She got so many awards and she went to a technical school that specialized in science and she was, you know, straight A student and so forth and so on. Then God spoke and said, I'm going to pay for all of her college. I'm going to pay for it. Well, when it came time to go to her undergrad, she was like, mm, I, you know, she didn't really know about all that. And so she went to the school that she wanted to go to, although she had a full ride to the University of Arkansas. Oh, talking wow. about, I'm talking about how God is preparing everybody else yes. 
while he's also in your family, yes. while he's also preparing and grooming you for the call upon your life, whether it be ministry or business. Yes. And so she was like, uh, she turned it down. She turned down the full ride and went to another school, New York Hofstra. And I was like, well, look, I know what God said. I don't know how you're going to pay for that. <laughs> That's not what God said. I can't help you. Right. So she figured it out and um, got scholarships and whatever, some student loans and, you know, got through it. Then after she graduated from there, God spoke again, not even through me, through someone else and said, remember, God said he was going to pay for all of your college. So. She was listening the second time around and she ended up going to Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York with a full ride in a $30,000 per year stipend and a house to live in. Wow. Meanwhile, over here on this end, I'm writing books, I'm coaching leaders, okay? And, and then, you know, I get married, I'm living life. The second child comes along and, and um, she didn't really know what she wanted to be. We, we, you know, still prepping and developing. He's like, oh, she's going to be one who's going to help people who have been wrongly accused of different crimes get off by using forensic science. I'm like, mm. okay, so now we got a science slash lawyer. Um, who's going to pay for that? Same thing. While God's still refining and developing me, taking me through areas you know, that need to be polished in my character, grooming me, working in my temple, telling me to get fit, healing me, you know, from different diseases that I had and all kinds of, you know, generational curses and all kinds of stuff. Yes. She's coming up. All right. So then after they're all off to college, then the whole vision of what I'm called to do morphed into really what I should be doing. Wow. So, and you so, didn't, so God didn't reveal that to you until your second daughter went to college or graduated college? Graduated. Until graduated. All the, all the kids were out of the house and everybody else's dream, check this out, had been paid for. Because what he was basically saying is in your capacity, you don't have the money to pay for everybody's dream. Yes. But I do. But I do. And so sometimes, you know, as entrepreneurs, we have these huge visions and we, I'm just going to say it this way. We don't always put family first. True. And in my case, God was like, you don't have a choice. I'm going to make sure that they go first. Yes. Yes. And this applies not just to your natural children, but I want to make an analogy right here to your spiritual children. Sometimes people that are in ministry get so stuck because they want to be the grand poobah. You mm -hmm. know, I try to say in ministry and run all the way across the world. And then when their ministry isn't growing, you know, to the size that they want it to grow, it's because that will happen through your spiritual children. The people that you're mentoring, your disciples, it's the Jesus model. Right. Okay? Jesus had a level, right, and a measure of what he did in two and a half years, but by golly, the apostles that he trained, okay, they were the ones upon the foundation that we're standing now called the church. Yes. Okay, so sometimes we miss that too. And again, this is all about how acceleration takes place in incubation while everybody else, because you're not the only person in your household that has a dream. <laughs> if you're it. entrepreneurial, you're probably raising children that are entrepreneurial or that have big callings too. It's and like, it's the whole thing that God has generations on his mind. It's yes. not all about us. It's not all about us. He's not thinking just about us. He's thinking about beyond us. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, the scripture that I want us to focus on in light of this conversation today is Proverbs 25, 8 through 9. Because when I was in this time period and I didn't understand what was going on and, you know, and I was waiting for, you know, we're always looking to get there, wherever there is. And I was looking to get there. Okay. And he gave me the scripture and it says that he who is humble, I will lead into what is right and best. He who is humble. And that Psalm 25, eight through nine. And so again, when you're humble, 
You come into his presence and you're seeking him every day. You have that business meeting, right? That ministry meeting to get your instructions so that you can accelerate in incubation. And he's going to do that when it's right and best for everybody, everybody in your family. And I want to add that it's not just about what's best for you and your family, but it's what's best for everybody. And now I want to bring it in to those who I know are in KDE that are like prophetic intercessors. Okay. I know that there are some people in here that are very prophetic, all right, in their calling. And so you are the sign and the wonder. You are prophetic entrepreneurs. A lot of times you're looking for the sign and the wonder, but you are that sign and a wonder. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? I mean that there are examples in the Bible of prophets that God used as the actual portent, P-O-R-T-E-N-T, sign. Elijah was one. Jeremiah was one. Remember when he was hanging in the stocks? That was a portent. So sometimes you're used as the sign. All right. And that's how it's been for me. I'm only able to talk about this right now because I was the sign. I mean, look at this. Can you believe this? Way back then. When my kids were little, he knew I'd be sitting here today having this conversation with you all, right, about acceleration and incubation. So using me as the sign, okay, I saw this scripture, Psalm 25, 8 and 9, playing out in my life as I was leadership coaching for 13 years. And, you know, then he called my husband and I into, you know, the field of coaching and like nobody even knew what this was. Okay. This was, this was before it hit, you know, the scene like it is right now. So we spent a lot of our time, you know, educating and allowing folk to explore us, you know, because you know, it's better to show them than to tell them. And of course we were doing this for free. <laughs> you know, at our own expense, all right. So we weren't making any money, although I was right. calling it the business. Yes. You know, again, what was going on was he was prepping behind the scenes. Remember the word, acceleration and incubation. So this laid the foundation, all right, for me to be able to do, remember what I said, all, and this is what I think sometimes we struggle with and why we get frustrated. What we're doing along the preparation period, the, the time when we are in incubation and everybody's being prepared, that is not necessarily the thing that will get you to your there. So true. Does that make sense? And yes. so if you are an entrepreneur, you know this. You This won't be the only business that you'll have. So stop trying to make what you're doing during your acceleration and incubation period the thing. Because you like it. Because you're passionate about it. But that may not be what God uses, okay? It could just be what he's using at that time. Yes. To train you, mold you, shape you, refine you, and develop you. Wow. So that's what was happening. And now, as I was doing that, I didn't understand that because he was he was making me as a pioneer. That's what he was doing. He was making me as a pioneer in the area that we're doing now, covering others with the knowledge of the glory. So a lot of times what you're doing entrepreneurial and ministerially is to prepare you for trailblazing business. That's good. That, that's what it's doing. It's preparing you to be a pioneer in your field. Because if you are a kingdom-driven entrepreneur and you are, that in and of itself is trailblazing. I mean, look at what you're a part of. It is a apostolic, right? Just like the apostles, it's a first, right? It is definitely prophetic and it is trailblazing. So it's not just your character that he's developing. He's preparing you to birth something that's pioneer. So going back to my daughter. Yes. My daughter, the oldest one, okay, when she was in her lab at Albert Einstein, she, just like she was sure when she told me what she was going to be at eight, that's, that's her personality. She is, I have never met anybody so sure of everything. And I would get <laughs> frustrated with her as a child. I was like, how did you know that? But she flows very strongly in word of knowledge. She's a prophetic type and she, she just knows stuff. And so she told her mentor at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, what I 
the research I am going to do doesn't work on rats. <laughs> I need human beings. <laughs> and again, remember, in science, they use animals. Right. Primarily for their research. And the mentor told her, that's not what we do here. She goes, that's what I do. And that's what works for this level of research. Now, this lady's been, not mind you, at this point, she's all of, you know, 20 soaking wet, you know, and this lady has been mentoring people forever. And um, so what my daughter did was she, like she did with me, she went out, she approached Mount Sinai Hospital, told them what it is that, you know, she, the field she's researching and already had some samples that worked on live human beings and said, can we partner together in short? And if I bring you the research, will you bring me or provide the people? So they were like, yes. And so then after they said yes, she went back to her mentor and said, see, this works. <laughs> Instead of arguing with her about the way it's already been done. And the, mentor was, and the mentor was like, what? Show me. So after she showed her that it works, the floodgates opened for my daughter. Wow. She got grants out of nowhere. The mentor was like pretty much yes to anything that you want to do. To, I mean, carte blanche, do it. I'm behind you. And when she graduated with her doctor's degree, her mentor looked at me and said, you get, my daughter's name is Deanna. She said, you get one Deanna as a mentor in a lifetime. One. Wow. One. She goes, I have been teaching for 55 years. She goes, you get one Deanna in a lifetime. She goes, I can retire now. She was wow. saying this, Jay, she was saying this with tears flowing down her eyes. Why am I emphasizing that? I'm emphasizing that to show you that when you are preparing Oh my gosh, Halezuvai, for greatness, your greatness and the greatness of your seed and your seed seed. It not only costs a lot financially, but it costs a lot spiritually. There's a lot of preparation that needs to go into this. Jesus trained for 30 years to do two and a half years worth of ministry. <laughs> Real talk. Moses prepared 40 years and the pioneers of faith didn't even see what they were promised. So, if, you know, you got to start thinking about this exponentially, yes, about this generationally, yes, but you got to start thinking about this like God wants to get the glory out of this. Yes. And glory is sometimes concealed in incubation, in that gestational period of time where you can't see what's going on. So what you're doing is groundbreaking. And a lot of time will be devoted to preparing others to receive your services, to receive your products, to receive your ministry. A lot of times you're ready, but everybody else isn't. Not just your family, but the people that you're called to aren't ready for this level of groundbreaking work that God has called you to do. And sometimes when we're rejected, we don't understand that. We yes. think that it's us they're rejecting or our product or our service. No, it's because the groundwork is still being laid. The foundation is still being laid. Let me give you an ex another example. I talked about how when we were coaching, you know, for 12 years, 13 years, nobody even knew what coaching was. Well, the, again, he was preparing me to be that pioneer. Well, now, you know, we're doing glory teaching. Right. Okay. Go back now. You know, mind you, when I was writing the first book in 2009, you, you didn't hear much about glory. It's just been within the last two years that every time you scroll down the Facebook timeline, there's a glory and fire conference. There's a glory explosion conference. There's a glory this, that, and the other. Okay. But I, they don't know it, meaning the masses may not know it. But I was what? Being prepared to blaze a trail in this area way before it became popular. Right. To some. Okay. Yes. So what helped me be able to do that was coaching all those years and educating and training. And now I don't feel like I need to do that because I know how to blaze a trail. Just keep building. So with that being said, 
a lot of times it's not everybody, it's not you. And I want kingdom driven entrepreneurs to hear that because I can feel the hearts of many of you. A lot of times you're crying out to God and you're like, God, what more do I need to do right. to be refined, to be molded and to be shaped? And God's saying through me, it's not you all the time. That's right. You've done all the work. It could be your family. It could be your children. It could be your customers. It could be your clients. It could be your constituents. It could be those you are called to serve in ministry, or it could be some spiritual principality like Daniel. Remember the Prince of Persia? That's literally what happened to me. Yes. I was right in that place in scripture. If you are KDE, and I know you are, you're, it's not just about conducting a business transaction. We're talking about products and services that are heavenly born. We're talking about things that God is giving you, instructing you to do while you're having your business meeting. So don't use the time of preparation and waiting. Don't use it to turn inward. Yeah, that's good. Don't use it to turn inward. Like, what am I not doing? No, look around you. Look around. And I mean, really look around. (laughs) <laughs> look at your family. You know what I'm yes. saying? Look at your customers. Look at your, look in the spirit like I had to do. Okay. Look around because other people could be prepared too. You know, sometimes, especially again, I'm talking to the prophetic entrepreneurs in here. When you get something from God, and if you're like me, you've got that same obedience, that swift obedience like an angel. As soon as he says it, you're on it. Just because the heavens are ready for it doesn't mean the earth is. I'm going to say that again. Just because the heavens are ready for what it is that God has given you does not mean the earth is. Everybody in the earth may not be ready for it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, what? In the earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Everybody in heaven's ready, but in the earth they're not. So let him do that exponential growing in the gestation period. Let him accelerate you and incubation. And then when and how, that's actually how you're able to shoot up and ascend so quickly because look at all the, everything that I just described. Did you catch it all? Everything that I just described is what's going on underneath. Yes, in that gap. Think about that. And aren't you you glad? And Shay, look, aren't you glad that you can't see all that and that everybody else can't see it too? Listen, that might feel a little overwhelming. (laughs) Do you really want to see all that? Right. Yes. So the spiritual climate needs to be right. Your temple, your character, everything about you needs to be right, molded and refined. Your family needs to be ready for this. Yes. Maybe maybe your whole family can't handle the full brunt of your calling when your children are 9, 10, 13, 14, whatever age. I remember I did a Bible study one time on the mustard seed. And it was like 10 of us in a group. And I literally went and brought mustard seeds and I had us plant them. And I told the group to speak to the seed every day, water it. I mean, like literally talk to the seed, yes. right? prophesy to the seed and some people i kid you not some people's mustard plant and the seed is like so small you can barely even see it we were actually losing them trying to plant them that's how small they are yes okay talking about faith the size of a mustard seed and we were dropping them everywhere and we couldn't even find them to plant them finally when we got them in the ground i mean i kid you not some people within like a week because we met weekly Some people's plant had shot up. I mean, it was like a whole tree in a week. Mind you, I'm the teacher and the leader and facilitator of this group. And my students are like bringing these big plants back, trees and jungles. I had nothing. Nothing was happening to mine. I'm watering. I'm speaking. I'm prophetically decreeing. I'm shouting. I mean, I'm lifting the thing up to heaven. Nothing's happening to my plant. So... (laughs) At the end of the five-week Bible study, some of their plants were shriveled up and dead. They had overwatered them. Oh, come on, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> come on and bring it.
spelling the word. <laughs> I so, caught that. <laughs> some of their plants were dry. I mean, like the ground was so dry, like they hadn't watered it in days, but they were yet watering it. So the plants died. Out of 10 of us, two actually had plants that were, catch this, the right size and continued to grow. Everything else died for one reason or another. So maybe you're like me. Maybe everybody else that has a business, it looks like they got trees right now, whole forest of Lebanon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but your little plant over here with this big vision is doing nothing, or so it seems. Wow. Oh my God. Because why it's accelerating in incubation. Yes. Sometimes that incremental growth, it peaks. And that's all that it's ever going to do. If you remember that chart, exponential went way up over, could have even went off the page. That's right. Incremental stopped on that chart at a certain place. And I'll never forget this. One time I was praying and I was in that place, all right, of frustration and looking at everybody else's tree and how they look so prosperous. And I'm over here talking, quoting Psalm 1, whatever I do in tears, whatever I do will prosper. He's going to make it come to full maturity. Whatsoever I put my hands to shall prosper. In tears, I'm going to roll my works upon the Lord. Nothing's happening now. But I'm quoting the word, praying, fasting, and in tears. And God spoke to me and he said, Karen, they're not going any further. They've gone as far as they can go because we're talking to people that are prophetic pioneers and entrepreneurs. Sometimes the trees you're looking at aren't going to grow any bigger than what they already are at that time you're looking at them. Wow. Spiritual climate. Okay, that's ideal. He's producing the spiritual climate that's ideal for the receptivity of what he's doing that's new in the earth through you, through that's you. Good. That's good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you say to the person who's I mean, we've said a lot, but for the person who's like, okay, I recognize that I'm in that space and I'm looking around to see what's going on for this space, but I just feel like, I don't know. And I just don't know where to go from here. Speak to that person. Go back to being humble. Go back to Psalm 50, 25, eight through nine, our foundation scripture. Get in prayer and get more instruction or do the last thing that he told you to do, knowing that acceleration is taking place in incubation. And let me say this about going back to that, that scripture and humbling yourself and praying and looking for more instruction. I don't know if this happens to anyone in KDE, but I feel led to share it. If you go and you're getting nothing day one, day two, day three, if, if this whole message of acceleration and incubation resonates with you, then that's probably how your prayer life is too. Some days you get nothing. You just enjoy being with him. And then one day it's like you got so many instructions you don't even know what to do with. Because remember, exponentially, right? And that acceleration of his word is taking place while you can't see it. That's it. That's good. That's good. Where do people go to get connected with what you're doing? I know you're teaching right now on the glory. Where do people go? How do they get connected? Okay. Um, well, if you are looking for a challenge, I'm doing a bit.ly challenge right here on Facebook coming up August the 6th through September the 3rd. I'd love to have you. It's free. Bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y slash glory challenge capital g for glory capital c for challenge if you think you might want to be a host 
and have us come to Georgia, Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, Arizona. That's gloryteacher.com, gloryteacher.com. And I didn't mention this, but I do want to say it. If you are in the process of writing a book, this is something new. My husband draws book covers from scripture. It's not your standard vision for a book cover. He takes you in the word and, and he shows you in the word something that he wants to illustrate on your book cover. We do that as well. And that's theartstandonline.com. Theartstandonline.com. Right. With book trailers and voiceovers and marketing all around, okay, that book cover, the premise of that book cover. Good stuff. So, Thank you for sharing today. Such good stuff. Yeah, this has been really great. I pray that everyone in KDE comes into that place where this is like a call, a clarion call back to focusing in the secret place, because that's where you're going to find your exponential and your acceleration and incubation. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com.